Hello everyone. Today we will discuss our cerebral palsy, the left out topics. So this uh, today we will cover the topics which is useful both in your viva sessions as well as in your theory examination. Okay. So first we will ta talk about types and classification of CP. So based on its clinical features and the predominant neurological findings, this uh, type CP has been classified as physiological one. First, it is classified as uh, physiological classification of cp next we will have topographic classification third will be functional classification and fourth is etiological classification so this physiological classification this mainly identifies the major motor abnormality so this identifies major motor abnormalities so physiology so if they ask a question like what is a physiological classification of cp so your answer will be first is spastic cp second is dyskinetic third is ataxic cp and fourth one will be mixed okay next is topographic classification so in this topographic classification it indicates the involved extremities so this mainly indicates the involved extremities so among the topographic classification we have diplegia Second is hemiplegia. Fourth is quadriplegia. Fourth mono. Next we have triplegia. And sixth one is double hemiplegia. Okay. Next is functional classification. This functional classification is based on GMFCS. So what is this GMFCS? It is nothing but gross motor function classification system. It is gross motor function classification system. So in this we have class 1. In class 1 the child can walk without any limitation. In class 2, the child walks with limitation. Class 3, child walks with a handheld mobility device. So, the child can walk only with the help of a support. So, the child walks with or walks using handheld mobility device. In class 4, the child have a self mobility device but with limitations in class 5 the child can use only a manual wheelchair so this is the gm fcs classification system because in your functional classification you have to i mean uh, uh, in your diagnosis you have to use everything this classification everything you have to tell about the physiological topographic uh, cp and in the functional cp in topographic cp whether it is diplegia hemiplegia quadriplegia and functional they come under class 1 class 2 or class 3 okay and etiology wise we have prenatal natal or it can be postnatal okay so these are the four types and classification of cerebral palsy next we will discuss about the clinical pathological and etiological correlations okay so here we will discuss they are clinical, pathological and etiological correlation. First is 
स्पास्टिक डाइप्लीजिया सो इन स्पास्टिक डाइप्लीजिया बाईलेर विल बी अ बाइलेटरल स्पास्टिसिटी ऑफ लेग्स सो द बाइलेटरल स्पास्टिसिटी ऑफ लेग्स विल बी ग्रेटर देन द आर्म्स so there will be a bilateral spasticity of lower limbs this spastic uh, the child can have spasticity even in the upper limbs also but the spasticity will be more in the arms compared to the leg okay that is the definition of this diplegia so the first clinical sign when the child is noted is when the child is crawling so when a child starts crawling the child will use his arms and uh, he, she or she will tend to drag her lower limbs so that is called as commando crawl so they can ask question like what is called commando crawl so the commando crawl comes in diplegic spastic diplegic cp so so this first clinical sign is noted when the child starts crawling or when the child starts to crawl okay this is called spastic diplegia in this spastic diplegia the child's iq will be near normal the comorbidities like seizures will be less compared to other types of cp so what will be the neuropathological in this cp so when you take a mri of this child you what you will be able to see in this there will be mainly periventricular leukomalacia this periventricular leukomalacia is more common in children who have who have got intraventricular hemorrhage in their uh, neonatal i mean uh, in their infancy period or neonatal period so in mri you will be able to see periventricular leukomalacia that is there will be scarring and shrinkage in the periventricular white matter so there will be a scarring and shrinkage of the periventricular white matter with compensatory enlargement of this ventricles there will be compensatory enlargement of cerebral ventricles okay so this will be your pathological finding that is neuropathological finding so what is the main etiology behind this spastic diplegia is etiology main patho etiology will be preterm so in a preterm child is more suspected to have a intraventricular hemorrhage which can lead on to this periventricular leukomalacia thereby the child getting spastic diplegia okay so this is about spastic diplegia next we'll see about spastic quadriplegia in spastic quadriplegia all the four limbs will be involved so here the iq of the child will be low the child will have more episodes of seizures will be present so the pathological image when you take a mri the child will have this periventricular leukomalacia will also be present along with that the child will have multicystic cortical encephalomalacia so multicystic cortical in kefalo malaysia so this is the main finding our main mri finding in a child with spastic quadriplegia the etiology for for this is contributed towards the predominant etiology is contributed towards perinatal or intrauterine hypoxic ischemic changes it is mainly because of perinatal or intrauterine hypoxic ischemic changes so when a child have a hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy in its uh, neonatal period or in the perinatal period the child can develop this multicystic cortical encephalomalacia which will lead on to this spastic quadriplegia in the child okay next
is spastic hemiplegia. In the spastic hemiplegia, there will be a reduction of spontaneous movements on the affected side. So there will be a reduction of spontaneous movements on the affected side plus the child will have a early hand preference that is the child cannot uh, for example we have seen in the gross motor milestone by dexterous reach unit dexterous reach and all so this by dexterous will not be sorry that is in fine motor development i have not covered that fine motor uh, that topic in this um, previous video so i'll take it in a separate session so the child will not be able to do a by dexterous reach so the child will be able to use only one limb so that hand preference will be seen earlier in this child so at a very early age so this one you have to remember next so what is the pathology behind it it is mainly because of infraction or necrosis it is a cerebral injury it is mainly because of the cerebral injury that is infarction or necrosis so what is the main etiology behind this it is because of hypoperfusion so it is because of the prenatal events like hypoperfusion or hemorrhage okay so we have covered the spastic uh, type in physiological we have covered the spastic type that is spastic diplegia quadriplegia and hemiplegia next we will see the dyskinetic one so in dyskinetic cp we have two types one is dystonia another one will be choreoathetoid so what is the difference between this dystonia and choreoathetoid in dystonia the child's movement will be reduced but the tone will be increased this one i am telling it in a simpler way okay so in dystonia the child's movement will be reduced but the tone will be abnormal it can be either increased or decreased in choreoathetoid the child's movement will be increased movement is this involuntary movement this involuntary movement will be increased plus tone will be decreased in this child in choreoathetoid dyskinetic cp so this is the difference between these two so what is the main pathology behind this so main pathology behind this is one is basal ganglia is getting affected in this child so basal ganglia is affected mainly in child with hyperbilirubinemia that to in child with bilirubin induced neurological dysfunction that is bind when a child has bind this will basal ganglia will be ma mainly affected in this most common etiological factor this is etiology this bind is an etiology second etiology can be this is first one second etiology is perinatal asphyxia can also contribute to this so there will be a status marmoratus due to the bilirubin deposition in the uh, this basal ganglia so the child will have this status marmoratus due to bilirubin deposition in basal ganglia okay next is next type of cp is ataxic cp in ataxic cp there will be pathological lesion mainly is present in the cerebellum so there will be a cerebellar lesions etiology factor here is prenatal cause okay so we have seen about the types uh, the physiological type topographic type functional and the etiological classification and we have seen each of the pathological and etiology factor contributing to the types of cp 
next in the next session we will crucially complete the comorbidities and the small small treatment part because cp is a very big topic so i'll try to cover a small part of the treatment also okay thank you please like share and subscribe our youtube channel let's all learn our pediatric together if any doubt uh, please mention it in the comment session or if you want me to take still more either to, if you want me to take still more elaborately please mention it in the comment session thank you